first base, third base eligible. The first base move, I think, keeps him in the lineup more often. And on this Twins team, you talk about some bashers. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, the Twins led all of Major League Baseball last year in home runs. And if anything, their team got better with the offseason addition of Josh Donaldson to now play third base, which enables Sano, not the best defensive third baseman, to move across the diamond to first, where he can just pound the baseball. I think he's going to hit – he can hit 30 or more home runs again this year. I think he will. So there's my team. I'll just go through it again. I'll name them individually. Molina's my catcher. Olsen at first. Castro at second. Moustakas at third. Bichette at short. Marcus Simeon, my second base shortstop. He's my middle infielder. Marcus Simeon last year scored 123 runs, hit 33 homers, drove in 92, and hit 10 – stole 10 bags for the A's. I think he's busting out and ready to go again. Abreu, my corner infielder. Betts, Soto, Harper, Springer, Azuna are my outfielders. Jordan Alvarez is my utility. And my bench, Sano, Biggio, Kane, Mancini, and Adele. My pitching staff, Snell, Glasnow, Darvish, Freed, Manea, Robbie Ray. I forgot to name Robbie Ray. He's my last pitcher before I picked Nate Pearson. I got him for the strikeout value. I know there's a lot of potential. I know he's wild as a buck sometimes. But I got him to see where he can go. I think Arizona is going to be a playoff contender this year. Lazardo, Urias, Batansis, McKay, and Pearson. So that kind of rounds out my draft of Sunday night. Critique me. Of course, you had you don't know the players that were before me and after me. I thought I picked a pretty good team. We'll see. Of course, everybody thinks they draft a good team, right? I mean, tell me a player after a draft. Oh, I drafted a horrible team. You don't do that. You think you drafted a good team, and I believe I did. So I want to spend a few minutes talking about outfielders who may be ready to break out this year. And, and you can disagree with me or agree with me. I'm going to name several. We're going to talk about some here, and then, you know, we'll go our own way. Think about these guys in terms of their potential, their opportunity. And the first one I want to talk about is Seth Brown of the Oakland A's. Now, I know a lot of people are looking at Ramon Laureano in the outfield this year because Laureano, there's reason to look at Laureano, right? He had a great second half. He's at the top of the A's lineup. He has an ADP of around 78 to 85. However, a lesser-known prospect is Seth Brown, who already has a spot, ladies and gentlemen, on the 40-man roster. And he was batting 343 with seven runs scored in Cactus League action before the spring training action was canceled. So we know Stephen Piscotty has been injured, and that injury to Piscotty could provide an opportunity for Seth Brown. And I think he's got a, a lot more offensive upside than, say, a Robbie Grossman. Brown is 6'3". What did he do last year? Well, he's a left-handed hitter who hit 30 homers in single A, double A, and then he hit 37 homers in triple A a year ago. And, the, of course, I know he's in the PCL, but he hit more homers last year than did Rockies prospect Sam Hilliard. Now, I know Hilliard plays in Coors and Brown plays in Oakley. Talk about two different ballparks. Wow. You know, Coors is, <laughs> is like helium whereas Oakland is like lead. But the fact that he put up those numbers and the fact that the Oakland Coliseum had the second lowest home run factor for left-handed batters, that is a factor to be considered. But Brown still has the numbers and the potential power to be similar to Chris Davis with a K if the at-bats are provided him. So it's all about opportunity for Seth Brown. Remember, 37 homers at AAA last year. Piscotty's hurt. He's at least got an opportunity. We'll see what Oakland does with him. But circle that name and keep your eye on Seth Brown. Another outfielder I'm looking at is Roman Quinn for the Phillies. Now, let's look at it on its face. Quinn's not going to give you any power, okay? But he does have speed. A sprint speed rated in the 99th percentile. So that's a good place to start 
when we're talking about Roman Quinn. And he's only been a part-time player the past couple of years. He's only had 239 at-bats over the past two seasons. But he is a career 280 hitter in the minors. And I think if he's given opportunity, he can do at least that in the major leagues. Now, he's, I guess, the easiest comp to him speed-wise, on base-wise, is Malik Smith. And remember, Malik Smith led the major leagues in stolen bases last year despite hitting only 227. Now, I'm not here promoting Malik Smith, okay? I'm here promoting Roman Quinn. So if Quinn could be given the chance and provide the opportunity, and he's in a dogfight for that starting position right now, that he could lead the National League in stolen bases. The question with him is, will he get the opportunity? And right now, that does not seem likely. You got Jay Bruce there, you got Adam Hazley there, and of course, you know, Bryce Harper is going to start. So it all depends on Bruce and Adam Hazley. The competition in spring training was between Quinn, it looked like, and Hazley. So I don't know what you do with Quinn and now that we've been cut short of a spring training and an opportunity. But I think you at least have to take a look at him and see. I tell you, a player I have on my list that now I think his opportunity has been possibly dried up, and that's Clint Frazier. You know, I had figured on Clint Frazier being drafted prior to the suspension. I don't know about you, because I saw Giancarlo Stanton not playing. I saw Aaron Judge not playing. Hicks was already going to be out. It just looked like the writing was on the wall. Now is the time for... <laughs> Clint Frazier, but now with the delay to the season and Girardi coming, not Girardi, ugh, Aaron Boone coming out yesterday and saying, okay, it looks like Judge, it looks like Stan, they're going to be ready when the season does start. Well, there goes opportunity possibly out the window for Clint Frazier. Now, we will see, but you've got competition there for backup outfielders. You Remember, they're trying to make a left fielder out of Miguel Andujar. And the Yankees are much more higher on Miguel Andujar than they are Clint Frazier. And you've also got left-handed hitter Mike Talkman. So, although he may be, uh, or was, once a top 20 prospect, the problem with Red Thunder is that he may not have an opportunity. Now, he hit 324, getting off to a hot start in April last year, but then he cooled down. The problem is you've got Andujar blocking his path. You've got Judge coming back healthy. Brett Gardner resigned. You've got Stanton. I like Clint Frazier. I just don't think New York is going to provide him the opportunity. I do think, though, Trent Grisham with San Diego will, will get that opportunity. Now, Grisham is nearly as fast as Quinn, who we talked about, Roman Quinn for the Phillies a moment ago. His sprint speed is in the 93rd percentile. And his offensive abilities are close to Clint Frazier. He showed off some of his power late last year. Um, and now he's been moved from a hitter's park in Milwaukee to not so much a hitter environment in San Diego. He was in that trade along with Zach Davies when the Brewers got Luis Urias and Eric Lauer. Manny Margot moved out of San Diego, went to Tampa. So now Grisham is set to man center field and bat somewhere in the middle of the Padres lineup. So he's going to get opportunity. And I love batters hitting in the middle of an order. So if Trent Grisham is out there, he offers speed. He stole 25 bases in his first season at rookie ball, then 38 last year. I think he can really be a factor on a talented team. Remember the Padres have Manny Machado, Tommy Pham, Fernando Tatis, and Grisham is only 23. And I think right now he has that opportunity. We're going to see how he performs. But I've got him circled, and he is on my draft boards this coming weekend as I have yet another draft to go uh, this coming Sunday. One more outfielder I want to talk about this morning is Victor Reyes for Detroit. Now, Victor Reyes, I think, is has been a sleeper and is a sleeper. Um, of course, Maben, Cameron Maben, looks like he's going to start in the outfield and – if he does, Reyes, I think, will still find at-bats because, you know, Detroit, they're rebuilding, right? I mean, Reyes has speed. He has power. He has a good batting average. I think Reyes could hit 304 like he did last year. He could steal 20 to 25 bases. 
I think in snake drafts, you got to pick him up late. He's going to get opportunity, going to be playing. Now, he has a sprint speed that puts him in the upper 90%. That's pretty good, right? Um, he His 283 extra base hits percentage ranked in the top 50 among batters with at least 100 plate appearances last year. He was just behind Austin Meadows and Juan Soto in that category. Now, he won't do many favors if you're looking for walks. He only walks 3.7% of the time. He's swinging the bat, okay? But he does have great potential, Victor Reyes. Going to play a lot in Detroit. Going to give you some average, some stolen bases, and some power. I really like Victor Reyes if he gets that opportunity. So of the ones I've just named, Reyes and Grisham, Frazier, Quinn, and Brown. I think I like Brown a lot. I like Grisham the best of those group. What do you think, chat room? But these are outfielders to at least keep your eye on, pay attention to injuries. If they don't start the season in a you know playing a lot, I think by the time the season rolls throughout and injuries befall different players, they're going to get some opportunity. And they're players to keep your eye on, I think, throughout the entire fantasy season. I want to talk a few minutes now about some prospects that I think in dynasty leagues, if they're not already scooped up, you want to take a look at Brandon Howlett, third base prospect for Boston. Now, he's raw, okay? So he spent 2019 in Class A. He's 19 years old last year. He had a 3.37 Babbitt. And his strikeout rate was sky high at 31%. Now, I'm giving you the, the downside first, right? So why am I keeping my eye on him? It's because he has, as I was reading about and studying for this show, produced line drive rates of more than 25%. And so for a young player to be having a line drive rate that high is unusually good. His walk rate is close to 13%. And at this point in his career, with the type of hitter he is, it's really good, too. So he was hitting pretty ball, pretty well the first half of 19. Looked like I saw him play late last year. Looked like he got a little tired. His bat, to me, looked like he got a little slower from earlier in the year. But keep your eye on Brandon Howlett, a third-base prospect for Boston. Another kid that I have actually seen play a lot is Bryant Packard. He's an outfield prospect for Detroit. He's from East Carolina University over in Greenville, not far from where I live. He went to the Tigers in the fifth round in the 2019 draft, probably because of concerns about his defense. We don't care about that in fantasy as long as he plays, right? But he hit 358 with a 994 OPS in his junior year at East Carolina. Had great numbers his sophomore year, too. And then in his pro debut late last year, Two stops of lower levels of the minors. His line drive rate was more than 30%. He's six foot three, weighs 200 pounds, great size, great power, hits the ball consistently, and he's left handed. Keep your eyes on Bryant Packard. Another outfielder, Edward Oliveras, an outfield prospect for San Diego. Now, the Padres are deep at every position in their minor leagues. Outfield is no different. And last year at Double A, he produced a one-two-three with runners run scored as a two twenty-three year old. He has excellent speed. He stole thirty-five bases last year, twenty-one the year before that. He also has the potential to hit twenty-twenty. He has a twenty-five and a half percent line drive rate. A really good hitter. Edward Olivares for San Diego. Now, something the Rangers did early in the draft last year is they nabbed two of the top three third basemen in the college ranks. They got Josh Young and Davis Wenzel. And I'll talk about Wenzel for just a moment. Wenzel hit the ball all three years he played at Baylor. In his junior year, he had a 1.094 OPS. He did hit just eight home runs, but saw 19 of his 65 hits go for doubles. So there's power in that bat, and a little adjustment with launch angle can make those doubles become home runs. Now, he had an excellent eye at the plate. He produced only five 
and hold on a second. Let me make sure I get this right. His walk to K ratio five to six.